नमस्कार सत्याकाल राम राम सा खंबागड़े वैक्कम आप सभी का और नीट मीडिया में फिर से स्वागत है मैं आपके होस्ट गायत्री देवी हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं अरिंदम मुखर्जी जी अरिंदम मुखर्जी इज अ वेल नोन फेस इन द जियो पोलिटिकल सर्कल्स इनकी बहुत मैं चाहती हूँ कि आज अरिंदम मुखर्जी पहले हम आगे बढ़े खुद अपने बारे में दो चार शब्द बताएं क्योंकि मैं कुछ ना कुछ टेक्निकल गलती करती हूँ टेक्निकल बंदे हैं इस वजह से और हमारा जो टॉपिक होगा दैट विल बी एंजलिना मर्कल और एडोगन नो दे हैड अ what do you say a conspiracy bolu or they had a tie up which actually led to a watershed moment in the history of europe it changed europe forever will europe be able to gain back its glory or it's going to go into the dark ages jisko hum kehte hain over to you arindam ji thank you so much for joining ji thank you namaste namaskar namaskar for having me and uh, a, a very good afternoon and namaskar to all your viewers um, What 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 do I start with? Do I start with Erdogan and Merkel, or do I start with my introduction? I I'm feel free. It is your platform okay. today. Your mag as you feel. Okay. Okay. So I happen to be. I'll I'll introduce myself first. My life runs along two directions: professionally and personally. Uh, profession wise and passion wise. Okay. So profession wise, I am a a a, a performance management consultant. so i do a little bit of performance management a little bit of goal setting in organization a little bit of organization restructuring if required i've got a couple of clients i have spent about 25 odd years in the corporate before this i have worked in south asian market in middle eastern market gulf market and also in india so that's one side a uh, uh, passion wise i am interested in geopolitics i have written a couple of books both fiction and non fiction the non fiction and geopolitics came in at a time when uh, my publishers thought that india was not ready for that kind of a book so the book released in the us it was released by ieb publishers in, in in virginia in the united states and i also am a opinion editorial writer for the new indian so that's what i do whenever i get the time and chatting up with uh, you know people like you chatting up with uh, podcasters like you Um, enjoying my time interacting with you there are some very good interactions that i have had in the past and i hope this is going to be a great one too so that's about me um as far as uh, angela merkel and erdogan are concerned um, you know there are three phases where europe ne uh, europe ka uh, watershed moments happened one was back in the, during the second world war that at the end of the second world war where there was we can talk about it a little while later uh the second happened in 2015 well there has been a steady trickle of refugees because oh france ne algeria ko attack kiya 1960s mein but i would club that with the post second world war era so like france has been mostly having north african refugees germany has been having turkish refugees and things like that economic refugees um but 2015 mein kya hua syria aur libya libya to tab nahi syria ke karan because libya by that time then was already devastated and um, uh, west was pounding syria for a couple of years and there were millions of syrian refugees that were being generated now turkey ne bahut smart khela wahan pe turkey started absorbing these refugees now uh, but okay the condition is they started absorbing these refugees but turkey kept its border absolutely weak so that these refugees could immediately switch over i mean immediately cross over to the balkans or to sail over to greece or ek bari wahan pe ghus gaya matlab you entering europe so there was a there were like there were several waves after waves of uh, immigrants most of them were illegal all of them were illegal illegally pakad ke chalo because this is a war which is going on people won't have their papers they're just running out of their country to so, us time mein europe being europe very you know method oriented structure oriented ye driven wo driven sab jaise ki hota hai greece ka ek problem ho gaya greece ka problem ye ho gaya ki greece considers turkey to be a dangerous state okay so dangerous state ke border se agar koi aapke paas aaya aur mujhe bole mujhe asylum dijiye you are bound to do that so by that rule which was their own creation greek parliament or greek supreme court ka creation they were duty bound they were law bound to allow those syrian or syrian ke bheed mein afghan bhi ghus gaye bangladeshi bhi ghus gaye pakistan bhi ghus gaye sab mauka mila sab nikal ke chala gaya turkey mein okay 
how they reach is not important what is important is suddenly greek greek borders have got thousands of refugees who all want to get into greece and thus scattered around in the rest of the uh, continent greek ne aisa khud apne law banaya hai ki turkey se koi bhi asylum mange to they are uh, humko asylum dena hi hai so they had no choice but to let them in ye chalte chalte i'll go back again into that a little while later ye chalte chalte jab 2020 aa gaya 2019 end or 20 aa gaya and when greek greece realized ki yaar ye to problem ho gaya we can't be taking in so many refugees we have to turn them back turn jab usko turn back karane lage then erdogan baith gaya ki bhai tum log covid leke aa rahe i won't allow you to get it because 2020 mein tab covid aa gaya okay so this is the game which was being played then ideally speaking any country any in a normal world any country jisne realize kiya bhai we can't absorb this kind of an illegal influx of refugees would put their foot down europe being europe kya kya europe ne bola no 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 we are going to take the immigrants sabko le lenge aista aista lenge aur ye immigrants ko theek thaak ek mahol ek atmosphere ek uh, 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 living system usko acha karke rakhne ke liye so that they don't fall ill and things like that we are going to send turkey billions of dollars so uh, it was 6 billion dollar that they were supposed to pay turkey they have paid around somewhere around 4.5 or 5 or 5.5 billion dollars details are available in the net you can find out aur ye kyun bheja turkey ko paisa turkey ko paisa isliye nahi bheja ki tum ye paisa lo aur immigrant ko apne paas rakho no no not because not for that turkey ko paisa bheja isne ki you know you send the immigrants but don't rush them apna wait period hai so let's suppose the wait period is one month let's assume let's assume for a batch of syrian refugee the wait period is one month in turkey these refugees what they were doing is wo 5 6 din mein wahan se nikal ke greece chala ja raha tha so to stop ye jaldi jaldi refugee ka aana without waiting for their proper uh, you know turn and things like that usko rokne ke liye we going to give you money so during the time that the refugees are staying in your country that interim time of one month two months or six months that the refugees are going to stay in your country so that you provide them with the proper infrastructure during their stay we are going to pay you this kind of money and and no points for guessing who took this decision it was angela merkel okay so this was the deal which you know kind of uh, defined that 2015 wala moment for europe what did erdogan do उसने पैसा ले लिया ही डिट डू एनी थिंग फॉर द रेफ्यूजीज कुछ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कुछ नहीं किया एवरी एंड वॉट ही डिड वॉज ही ऑल्सो हेल्ड यूरोप टू अर आंसम कुछ भी प्रॉब्लम होता था उसके साथ बिकॉज टर्की वॉज ट्राइंग टू गेट इन टू यूरोपियन यूनियन देन एट दैट पॉइंट इन टाइम ही स्टार्टेड पुशिंग प्रॉब्ली ही स्टार्टेड पुशिंग और प्रॉब्ली समथिंग इसका इंफॉर्मेशन तो डोमेन में नहीं है French Islamist political party started clamoring for Turkey's uh, inclusion in the European Union. और जब भी भी टर्की को लेके कुछ भी प्रॉब्लम होता था वेन एवर देश एक्सप्रेस देयर डिस्प्लेजर विद टर्की विद एर्दुगान एर्दुगान वो सेट विद दैट रेफ्यूजी का टैप एंड थ्रेटन यूरोप कि तुम ऐसा बोलोगे तो हम टैप ऑन कर देंगे अभी दो लाख रेफ्यूजी घुस जाएगा यूरोप में एंड यूरोप बस ना 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 बाबा कुछ मत करो कुछ मत करो सो ही हैड लिटरली हेल्ड यूरोप टू रैनसम he still has got a lot of clout as far as the uh, this in control of the inflow of refugees is concerned what is surprising is you know that yeah kahan france kahan turkey okay exactly is, right? the same point kahan france kahan turkey aur wahan france mein baith ke islamic parties Turk, uh, france ko bol rahi hain uh, bol rahi hain ki uh, turkey ko european union mein add karo look at their uh, unity and uh, brotherhood brotherhood is the term and brotherhood incidentally plays a major role because europe is majorly influenced by this party called muslim brotherhood jisko leke hum baat kar sakte hain baad mein okay the real brains behind the koi koi bolte uh, arab arabization of europe i call it turkification of europe in fact i have written an article on first post wo two uh, parts mein nikla tha ki what is turkey's bigger ambition any anyway, we can go back to that so abhi kya hua जहां तक यूरोप का सवाल है आई डोंट नो आई 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 लॉस्ट माय फ्लो व्हाट आई वाज सेइंग एनीवे ओवर टू यू 
France ki uh, parties, Muslim parties, they are telling uh, France to include uh, Turkey in Europe. Yeah, go to hai. And in fact, there are a uh, lot of Muslim parties in Europe, Islamic parties in Europe. Every almost Germany has them, Denmark has them, France has them, Belgium has them. There are a lot of Islamic parties. Finland has them. There are a lot of Islamic parties in Europe. And this ka jo kya bolte hain isko? The moral is support for this. Handsome. Turkey is, yeah, and and a lot of uh, these political parties, probably, I am not sure because uh, public domain, mein kuch hai nahi. a lot of these parties do have quite solid links with Turkey because Germany, ka jahan tak sawal hai. Germany has got a sizable chunk of Turkey's population. Okay, yeah, and this is from the time from 1960s onwards that Germany was at one point in time encouraging labors to come into Germany to settle down. And their initial idea was, in fact, this was the initial European idea. They were encouraging labor movement because Europe's population it was largely uska population birth rate uska thoda sa kam hai. Then it was an aging population during those days also. So Europe was encouraging labors and post-industrial society. Plus, you've had your industrial revolution for 300 years. Now you've moved into a post-industrial phase. You would not find too many of uh, from the younger generation who are interested to go and work in a factory. So you need your labor forces. What Europe did was Europe started encouraging labor movement. At uh, uh, time, mein, you had one of the some of the other disturbances going on. Kabi Middle East, mein ho rai, kabi North Africa. Mein ho rai. So there were a lot of naturally there were a lot of Muslim refugees that had come into Europe. The first expectation, coming back to what I was saying, the first expectation was that they would work, apna paisa kamayenge, kuch yahan karcha karenge, kuch ghar mein bhejenge, or jab iska retirement ka time ho jayega, ye log retire karke apna retirement benefit leke apne ghar chale jayenge. That was the first uh, assumption of Europe which went went wrong. None of these guys went back. They settle down. Now, if you are not ready for it, what happens when you are not ready for it? Europe ko ye matlab, this was when you saw the first batch of your labor labors settling down, you immediately had to come together to create probably a framework, create a of operating procedure bolye, kuch bhi bolye, of how to assimilate and how to integrate these people, Europe never did, did that. So Europe talks about, while Angela Merkel and all, they talk about multiculti, multiculturalism and all, multiculturalism has been a ma massive failure in Europe. That way, United States scores much higher as far as uh, multiculturalism, as far as assimilation is concerned. Okay, Europe has no idea how to assimilate people. So these people would come in, these people would retain everything about them. Okay. Now, conceptually, this is this becomes a clash of a pre-industrial ideology and a post-industrial society. And you've got to go through industrialization. Unfortunately, India also has not had complete industrialization. You have to go through the phase of uh, uh, go through the industrialization phase to understand the kind of mindset changes that happens. Okay, pre-industrial people ka jo mindset hota hai, uske, in fact, even though India has not been industrialized fully, but we do have a lot of post-industrial influence. We've gone through a lot of mindset changes. So it, it would become very difficult for us also across a lot of uh, 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 levels, across a lot of areas to sort of understand the pre-industrial mindset and where are they coming from and why are they coming from. So a clash of pre and post industrial mindset is a major issue in Europe. These guys, for example, um, well, cultural relativism, you know, this concept of relativism came in to address that. That no culture is uh, superior, no culture is inferior. Everybody has got their own cultural practices and every culture is best. Why? Why did it come in and why did it hold so much of ground? Is because Europe had no idea how to deal with these people. So if I take the example of uh, the, the township that I grew up in, Durgapur. Okay. It was an industrial town. Now, Durgapur's... Durgapur's industrialization took a hold on us and me and my batchmates and people who were born during the 70s, during the early and mid 70s. 
हाउ डिड दैट हैपन दुर्गापुर वॉज अ स्मॉल टाउन कॉलोनियल टाउन तो नहीं सेटलर टाउन काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग विच वॉज एस्टेब्लिश बेस्ड अराउंड अ स्टील प्लांट now when the the plant started rolling when the plant started producing they needed workers so you had people from all over the country so you had people from jharkhand you had people from uh, bengal different districts of bengal from orissa who had all come into work those were the days 1950s and 1940s were the days when steel was like the in thing and this thing so a lot of people found a lot of employment there now these people by the virtue of their background because these were the first generation so let's assume that my father was my uh, grandfather was a farmer and my father thus was a farmer son from somewhere in the from somewhere in the hinterlands of a district called burdwan who had traveled to durgapur and he was working there as a steel melting shop operative and you also had a ex who was the son of let's say i don't know a uh, a uh, uh, a zamindar whose time went bad who's also had education who also came to durgapur steel plant to work and he also started as a crane operative in steel melting shop and both of them both my father and that mr x shared the same shared quarters in the same neighborhood okay so when my so being the son of a ex zamindar he would have had some kind of certain amount of air and being the son of a farmer my father would also have had certain amount of air about him so wo uch nich waha tak tha but when we were born let's say the zamindar's uh, 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 grandson was born and i was born who is the farmer's grandson and we went to the same school because the school doesn't differentiate and we grew up the same way there is a kind of a uniformity which sort of builds up in between our, in, in amongst ourselves a kind of an identity which builds up amongst ourselves and this 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 idea of being a zamindar or this idea of being a farmer sounds outlandish to us so today so when we grow up if somebody comes with the baggage of how great he was or how great he is we find it difficult to digest that i am not saying we find it difficult to accept we find find it difficult to digest that how come people so this kind of a change of mentality that happens is the result a simple example of the result of growing up in an industrial uh, uh, industrialized uh, growing up through industrialization now you multiply this across entire europe 17th century say 18th century say europe's industrialization started Europe went through that phase of industrialized civilization for three hundred years. It touched every town, every village, every person in Europe. Okay, okay. Somebody industrialized first, somebody industrialized second, but that went to a through a massive. I mean, it it was a complete industrialization that phase that they went through. All of these ideas, capitalism, communism, these are all industrial ideas. They all evolved from there. now you so we've got a very small example of how a son of a zamindar and a son of a farmer becomes the same after a couple of generations when if you live in an industrial society not going to you know judge whether it's good or bad but this is the result of it on the other side you have got a pre industrial society like let's say in afghanistan where it is primarily a raiders economy because there is not no industrial output What is the raiders' economy? It's a uh, uh, basically you go to another village, there you will get what you will get. You will get what you will get. So they are basically pastoralists and herders and nomads. Okay, and they survive on a raiders. Either it's a pastoralist economy, whether it's like herding of your goats and your uh, lamb and your sheep and cutting and eating them whenever they. I mean, they provide you your food. They graze and they provide you their food, your food. Or whenever money is short, you go and you raider. Uh, neighboring village or a neighboring clan or neighboring what no good or bad again about it so these two people the europeans at the end of industrialization would have a mindset which is completely different from an afghan of 1950 europe went through a lot of changes afghanistan or a syria or a libya or a saudi arabia didn't go through all those changes so those people who have been living in 17th century europe are not living there now because they have gone through a phase of industrialization but those people living in 17th century in a saudi arabian peninsula are the same because there's been no industrialization now what you're doing in 2015 or 
1990 or whenever is you're clubbing these two people and you're asking them to coexist together how is this possible that is what europe has gone through and europe doesn't have an answer to that right and uh, there are also cultural differences as you mentioned the yes. religious culture especially in context yes. one is coming from yes. literally dark ages the other is totally in a bright phase and they are coming together the yes. other is trying to take over through the uh, what do you say population might and impact on the political parties money power muscle yes. power g yes so uh, again the religion also as a as a as a consequence of industrialization christianity changed a lot now again acha theek hai industrialization chhod dete hai even if i look at let's say the second the two world wars which have like created a permanent scar in the memory of europe it was post second world war that they decided to go slow that they decided to go soft they decided to give i mean put this religion factor give the religion factor a back seat and focus on being consumer and so on and so forth and they went on to create european union which becomes a which became a huge trading block a consumer block so religion took a back seat and these kind of social engineering takes about one generation to start showing results so if my generation let's say my generation i belong to you and i and everybody belongs to a small town and there is sudden uh, there is a sudden decision that from now on there wouldn't be any going to church there wouldn't be any mass there wouldn't be any prayers there wouldn't be anything and we live like this for 40 years and eventually all of us we become old we get married we give birth to our next generation so the next generation is born where there is no touch of religion in their entire in their existence in their life so what does this next generation this this next generation is the result of a complete insulation of a religion thing okay a social engineering result europe went through that and so 45 say like 80 tak 45 se like whoever was born let's say during 1945 1950 during the era they came they came into this world at a time when europe had decided to go slow on uh, expressions pertaining to uh, religion christianity okay so the result of which is that their offsprings today have got no contact they are absolutely rootless when it comes to their religious identity they have got no contact with their religion on the other hand the immigrants that have come here are fiercely religious people there has been no point in time in their in their in their collective existence as a community so whether it's a pakistani or a syrian or a afghan community doesn't matter there has never been in their existence as a community a time where they had been insulated from religion they have got a very strong religion religion bond with their religion good or bad again us pe nahi jaate so that is again one aspect which you rightly pointed out now we all know that religion influences culture so naturally jiske sath religion ka tie up bahut strong hai bonding bahut strong hai aur jiske sath religion ka bonding bilkul bhi strong nahi hai there is bound to be cultural differences so all of these are now coming into the forefront and th- this is absolutely normal guys you know there are different kinds of people that exist all around the world you may be more uh, religious than i may be so this is perfectly fine but the the sheer idiocy that europe took i mean europe uh, allowed the sheer how na the sheer idiocy that europe uh, how should i say demonstrated okay to put it nicely in allowing these two kinds of people to come together in not taking any initiative to assimilate the second batch of people that came in matlab they were europeans they were irreligious people at atheist europeans who were there and you have got this fiercely religious people who are coming in european union and their leadership took no initiative to assimilate these people so that is one problem so there are religious differences cultural differences uh, mindset ka differences there are every differences that exist and they allowed that to keep existing thinking that ye to bahut kam hai you know 0.1% of a population 1% of a population kuch nahi hoga now if i go just give me a second if i go through a page in wikipedia now amsterdam has 12% muslim antwerp has 16% Uh, there is a place called Oberwiller's in France, which has got forty-four percent. 
एंड द लिस्ट गोज ऑन एंड ऑन एंड द विकिपीडिया सर्च में आपको मिलेगा लिस्ट ऑफ सिटीज इन द यूरोपियन यूनियन बाई मुस्लिम पॉपुलेशन उसमें आप देखोगे यू गेट एवरीथिंग so from 40% to 50% there are quite a number of cities okay so yeah now over to you uh ji arinda these people came invaded immigrated mm. whatever word you use europeans did nothing but now what is happening is the muslims or i would say immigrants because that includes africans also अब ये लोग इनको पूरा का पूरा ऑन स्लॉट मतलब ये पूरा का पूरा चेंज करने के लिए रेडी बैठे हुए हैं कल्चरली रिलीजियसली पॉलिटिकली सोशली यूथ इकोनॉमिकली ऑल्सो सो इट सीम्स वॉट एंजलिना मर्कल डेड और वट एवर दिस डिसाइडेड मे बी यू नो शी डिड नॉट कैलकुलेट और शी डिड नॉट परसीव द थ्रेट ऑफ वॉट माइट अनफोल्ड इन गियर्स इट्स इट्स नाउ the end of european glory i would put it that way okay yeah europe is in for a really tough time i mean just before this uh, session we were having this chat between you and i were having this chat that how how do we see europe uh, there is a certain amount of uh, kickback which europe is producing in terms of those fringe right wing movements but uh, that's nothing that's too little too less and um, if europe goes down this path give it a couple of decades you would see a completely different europe emerge because what we most of us don't realize okay we see a um, a, a georgia meloni and we see a right movement in germany a afd party in germany and we we see a marine le pen in france and all but did you also notice that <clears throat> Meloni had this fierce anti-immigrant status before she was elected, which is all changed now. Okay, Poland, uh, European Union, me, aake kitna bhi sound bite de de. We are not letting people in. We are not letting people. Poland has already let a few lakhs Muslim immigrants in. Now Poland is talking about. Abhi Poland ka language thoda change ho gaya na. Illegal immigrant nahi aane denge. Bol rahe the. Immigrant aane nahi denge nahi bol rahe the. the the leadership is also changed because he had a very hard stand against the immigrants and muslims if you remember he went yeah. viral across the world ji yeah so what is happening why did a thick hell for poland may you have a stance against a certain things probably your voters though i reserve serious doubts about the fact that voters change it because this this these uh, mass migrations have got a lot of globalist influence which is probably a topic of for another day another discussion but why did a elected leader like a meloni suddenly change his stance unka to abhi koi election nahi hai unka to election ho gaya she is won the election why did she suddenly change the stance there is a huge amount of pressure which is there which we don't see from chiefly from the globalist cartel which is kind of promoting this kind of a uh, uh, i would say a uh, orchestrated chaos in europe okay so 2019 50s onwards there were a lot of groundwork that was laid predominantly by muslim brotherhood that was on their own which we can talk a little by uh, talk about a little while later 2015 ka jo hua aur abhi ka jo hone ko ja raha hai probably with the israel and hamas war happening and so much of hamas uh, is a palestinian refugees coming out with egypt jordan etc etc refusing to accept them uh, these people would probably all move to europe in the near future and again europe has no policies in place to put them the thing is why are they moving to europe there must be some reason why they move to europe why their movement is encouraged why the european leaders are just sitting tight doing nothing matlab theek hai dimag mein hai but itna to dimag hai ki you can create a couple of policies and procedures ठीक है तुम में वो भी काबिलियत नहीं है बट एट लीस्ट यू कैन रेज योर वॉइस सेइंग दैट नो टू रिफ्यूजीज यू कैन स्टैंड बैक यू कैन स्टैंड अप अगेंस्ट यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स एंड से दैट यू नो यू बीन क्या बोलते हैं उसको यू बीन डीस्टेबलाइजिंग द मिडिल ईस्ट फॉर द पास्ट 50 इयर्स एंड दिस इज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ इट वी स्टॉप नाउ दे कांट इवन डू दैट व्हाई बिकॉज़ देयर इज अ एज आई सेड देयर इज अ ग्लोबलिस्ट नेटवर्क व्हिच इज बिहाइंड दिस व्हिच इज एडिंग टू दिस डीस्टेबलाइजेशन ऑफ यूरोप एंड देयर इज अ वेरी सिलेक्ट सेट ऑफ एनालिस्ट very select set of analysts 
जो कि मेन स्ट्रीम नहीं है यू गॉट टू रियली सर्च फॉर देम एन यू गॉट टू रियली नो देम एंड फाइंड देम आउट हु थिंक and i wrote an article on this or uh, expanding on this for the times uh, the new indian this very select set of analysts they think that this is the west's ploy to sort of push recruitment worthy the young population into europe recruitment kaha ka all the jihadist all the all uh, the fatimayu and the uh, and the and the and the hezbollah and all these brigades on which the west doesn't have a control the radical brigades the semi terrorist brigade which are controlled by iran yahan ka recruitment ko band karne ke liye they are pushing all these young people as many young people as possible destabilizing a syria destabilizing a palestine destabilizing a lebanon and pushing all of these people to europe okay now i find this a little far fetched personally for me but theek hai i am explaining oh, what i am somebody radicalized from iran syria whatever the countries into their own uh, neighborhood this is it okay. doesn't add up the logic ah uh, this is this is where i sort of tend to agree with their analysis why because if these people move into europe they were frankly speaking let's admit the fact if you are a globalist if you let's assume you are a globalist okay i am a globalist you are a globalist europe today practically has no value europe doesn't have natural resources europe doesn't generate wealth europe is a huge consumer block europe mein na to aapko productive workforce hai यूरोप में ना तो आपका वेल्थ है यूरोप में क्या है ना पेट्रोल है ना कुछ है यूरोप इज जस्ट अ ट्रेडिंग ब्लॉक व्हिच इज बीइंग रिड्यूस टू अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल मिलियंस एंड मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल हु आर लिविंग इन गवर्नमेंट लार्जेस्ट जो गवर्नमेंट का खाता है गवर्नमेंट का पहनता है काम कुछ नहीं करते हैं दे आर लिविंग लाइफ किंग साइज सो एज फार एज यूरोप इज कंसर्न टू यू एन आई लेट्स से वी आर ग्लोबलिस्ट यूरोप प्रोडक्टिविटी इज गॉन डाउन टू द डॉक्स तो यूरोप का कोई यूटिलिटी अपने को नहीं है now how to utilize europe one last time how can we utilize europe if we push this recruitment aged people who are ekdam borderline radicals into europe we can soon push them eastward enough to crowd the western borders of russia and we can destabilize russia this i find very interesting okay you already have uh ukraine ka problem going on you already have a azerbaijan armenia problem going on in the caucasus caucasus has always been russia's soft underbelly it was from the times of the ottoman there was a time in 17th century when the british uh, you know they orchestrated the caucasus con between the circassian and the dagestani rebels when the tsarist russian army was fighting the british uh, there was a british by the name of lord urkuat he was the guy who was providing them guns and weapons and uh, paisa and everything okay back during those days and caucasus sort of that that dagestan circassia region they bled russia for a close to 25 years before russia went all out and conquered them so caucasia is russia's one of russia soft point you've got a ukraine which is a problem area for russia right now finland ke sath problem so finland se leke यूक्रेन आके ईस्ट रशिया आके एंड ईस्टर्न रशियंस कंट्रीज दैट आर जस्ट वेस्ट ऑफ रशिया बॉर्डर पोलैंड दे आर नॉट वेरी रशिया फ्रेंडली बिकॉज दे वर वंस अ पार्ट ऑफ सोवियत यूनियन एंड दे डोंट हैव गुड हैंग ओवर ऑफ दैट सो यू गॉट द एंटायर वेस्ट ऑफ रशिया माइड इन टू समाइंड ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लम देन रशियाज कॉकेशियन रीजन स्टार्ट which is already a problematic area then the central asian republics come into picture the borders with kazakhstan and all even though they are a little bit more little bit stable compared to what's happening uske baad chala gaya russian border with china which is again contested and far east of russia you have got the, the 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 border dispute with japan on the that kuril island issue so what you are doing is by just spending a few million dollars you are surrounding a country a joint like russia and you are like kind of uh, swamping it with a with a, with a border issue which a major border issue that runs for thousands of kilometers which is good enough to destroy any power if united states had that kind of a border issue would the salt be khatam ho jata so this is a good geopolitical ploy is what this analyst are saying mind you i am not saying that okay 
I did I did a kind of a, 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 an explanation of the articles that I have been reading. They're saying that this is one of the two reasons why they are trying to push this recruitment for the semi-radical guys into Europe. And Europe has no utility. It will be there. It will be there. It will be there. Interestingly, there is another very strange thing which is happening. The immigrants that have got into Europe, okay, so let's assume a typical Syrian has got two wives and each of these wives have got four to five kids. So all in all, there's like 10 people, okay, in that family. This guy, what he does is he gives a token uh, divorce to both his wives. So these wives are now on their own. Okay, so five, one wife, four children, another wife, four children, five, five, 10 people. The government of France is supposed to look after them. Why? Because she's a divorced single mother. So they are drawing funds like nobody's business. European Union is like, they, they, they don't have a way out. They have created this elaborate thing for themselves. This very decent post-industrial structure, which is supposed to be utilized by, you know, first world people and which is going on very well. But then you've got these people who have come in, who have found a way to bypass your system and they're, you know, utilizing it and they're making full, I mean, full use of it in ways known best to them. And Europe doesn't have an answer. And they're very smart at it, actually. They know all oh, yeah. the loop. They might yeah. not know how to read and write, but they know how to, uh, you know, uh, utilize the loopholes for their own advantage. Achha, Arindam, the last question. Uh, uh, no, uh, I, I would rather say continue, please. But there is one question. We have been seeing the rise in the, uh, as you said, spring revolution kind of a thing. How big it is in order to counter this onslaught which is happening in the entire Europe? Because in Germany, there is bikers gang. In Spain, there is rise of another fringe element. In France, we have uh, uh, we have groups of people now forming associations, uh, youngsters especially. Uh, we have seen mm. that during the time of the uh, of the you know uh, uh, the riots that happened with respect to the pension schemes. Similarly, in uh, UK also, I'm hearing the same thing because there have been grooming gangs that side across Europe, big or small countries. Uh, I would say the whites are rising. Uh, that's that's a kind of a broad and very bold title I would give. But th there are there is a response coming from the other side now. They are pushed to a corner to respond. How big it is to tackle the onslaught that is happening on them? Okay, so uh, I am taking the answer. Okay, so the issue with uh, the the my my opening statement would be it's, it's too little to less as far as the far right movement in europe is concerned the issue that we're looking at is the the organizational infrastructure which the uh, the the muslim parties political parties they haven't built actually but they have been getting the infrastructure that we are talking about the infrastructure that we probably should be looking at in order to understand the depth of it goes back and it probably started during the time, uh, the end of Second World War, 1950s, 1960s, say, kuch structures hai, which are existing in Europe. Jiske upar base karke, you have so many political parties that have come. Political parties cannot just come out of nowhere. So these infrastructures have been there for the past 50, 60, 70 years. They have been working relentlessly. They have open schools. They have open mosques. They have open think tanks. They have their own research centers. They have got a massive amount of reach. Okay. So when you evaluate them, when you understand them, then you would yourself realize that a couple of biker gangs are nothing, actually. Then you would yourself realize that, you know, an elected leader like a Georgia Meloni, why suddenly she starts singing a different tune? And then you would realize that no matter what, a Poland or Hungary is a different thing because Hungary has got its, you know, moral support tied with Russia. So I'm not talking about Hungary. Now, why Poland and all? Why Sweden appears helpless? Why England appears helpless? Yes, you did talk about grooming gangs, right? But the English media still has a problem in accepting that these are Pakistani people. They still call them Asian men. They've been That's censoring Suela, people. But was fired because she, she just pointed yes. out towards. Yes. So these people are running scared. So you, th that's what I'm saying that now you have a XYZ. So this is, let's say, the Islamic movement, you know, Europe. Though it is not like that, not organized that way, but let's assume that you know XYZ 
slash Islamic slash whatever movement in Europe is organized today because it has got a very solid backup. The far right movement as a response to that in Europe is trying to organize at their top, but uska backup ka hai? where are the politicians? Where is the support structure? Where are the institutions? Where are the think tanks? So they don't exist. So I, as I said, going back to my opening statement, yes, they are trying, but I really don't know what their trials would get them. And I really don't know how focused they are. Right. And they do not have the enough finances, the enough political backup, infrastructure, the unity that these people have because they are, say, yes. the, the centers of their unity are madrasas and masjids. Let's accept it. That's the starting point. Every Malvi, Molana is, it tries to connect and bond the entire community and they have a very strong unity, which unfortunately, uh, I think the Europeans don't have. Half of them don't even visit the church. And there is another thing, half more than half, and there is another thing which is which I find very remarkable. And this is one thing which I really appreciate. An average Muslim guy is politically much more aware. Okay. Yeah. And this is my personal experience. And I, no, as I said, I, it's, it's an, yeah, and it's an admirable trait. I really like that. You've got this political sudden interest in politics and geopolitics which has come amongst Indian people is not. Uh, because of some fundamental shift. It is because of the fact that either they like BJP or they like Modi ji or they like what is happening in, in, in the foreign uh, you know, uh, circuit with external affairs minister Jai Shankar uh, coming in and all. Hey, you have a very suave guy who's got very ready answers and a lot of YouTube hits and all. So people are getting interested because of that. On the other hand, I have grown up seeing that the Friday mosque, they, 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 the gatherings that happen, they discuss a lot of political issues. And I'm not saying that they are right every time, but what I'm saying is that there's there's certain kind of awareness that builds up so that whenever somebody discusses politics, up oh my god, pe please politics You actually look forward to it or you actually take part in it. That builds up your acumen, which is there in the uh, in the Islamic population, in, in the Islamic youth, which is not there. And Europe ka to bilkul bhi nahi hai. So this was building on the point that you raised. Yes, uh, undoubtedly. And uh, it's it's because of their political awareness and they understand that power is power and that power comes through knowing the political circles and un understanding its intricacies actually so yes. with that note thank you. yeah thank you so much arindam for joining it was a wonderful session we are going to be taking one more uh, session forward to this one which is uh, very critical to understanding where the things are going forward for europe and middle east yes. as well so thank you so much for joining thank Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the alternate media. If you want to contribute, 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 if you want to